example example like when we have somehow some sometimes we might use uh, some type of motorbike and sometimes sometimes we might use the other one so what if we decide let's use particularly this type of let's say type x motorbike what is the effect of that on the overall success rate of the deliveries so uh, when for example like we have to have like the whole data trained on the model just to understand the each variable's future importance but in case of causal inference we can just infer uh, the causality between variables if we understand especially if we can understand the relationships and the the decisions we make and also if we can actually postulate the problem really well we can understand the causal inferences between each variables so i think the most important thing about causal inference would be like we don't have to train a model to understand the correlations between the actual variables yeah thank you thank you great um great so we have adiat um hi uh hi. my understanding of this week's challenge is uh, gocard actually use their services so they assign you a pilot uh based on proximity on which pilot is the closest when you have to deliver your person so from my understanding the we basically have to make it make some cosa inferences draw some cosa inferences what i understand from cosa inferences uh we use observed data to experiment so if you want to find out why something you want to find the cause of a variable that changes the variable we have to actually run experiments right but now we don't want to run experiments we'll be using the observed data to make uh, to draw our cosa inferences so that's basically what we'll be drawing. So we'll be asking a lot of questions and we'll be thinking out of the box a lot. That's my understanding. Thank you. Um, and we have uh, Andinet. Yeah, uh, they more or less they uh, say it uh, all. Yeah, the, this week's challenge is there are two basic things that we uh, need to do at the end of the day. One is uh, uh, inf inferring the cause, of the co cause, or the, or like we have to come up with some uh, inference about uh, causal relationship that like uh, different variable has. So there are some questions we need to uh, answer or draw a causal relation. Uh, between the variables so uh, in order to do that we might need to like uh, adjust the data uh, to uh, like come up with variables uh, to make that uh, causal uh, inference so we need to do that in as also like we have to uh, use the machine learning to with causal uh, inference to come up with uh, some uh, recommendations. And we have to optimize these existing problems that they have, uh, because like as they grow, the uh, number of unfulfilled uh, uh, orders are like, are growing. So uh, in order to avoid that, or like in order to increase the fulfilled orders, uh, well, uh, we need to recommend them, uh, like the, if we do this, it will, this would happen. So. Uh, this is what I uh, understand about the challenge. Great. I think this is almost enough. You have done my work. Uh, I am actually um, trying to compare section of the intervention. So. I have just started updating slightly so that it is much more, uh, yeah, Michael. Michael, you can go on.
Hello, can you hear me? Um, yeah, we, we can. Okay, uh, thank you for the rest. I would like to say that first. And uh, this week's uh, challenge is, uh, as uh, my peers have mentioned it before, uh, to have this is, uh, some review about it. Uh, we have uh, a client called Gokada, in, which is a Nigerian company, uh, which uh, facilitates deliveries in Nigeria. And uh, the most important question uh, that we are going to apply uh, the uh, data engineering or machine learning uh, approach or the programmatic approach for is uh, that is optimization of uh, driver requests to increase the company's revenue and customer satisfaction. So we will be provided with the data and uh, since uh, abstracting, uh, extracting some insight from a table is uh, the main uh, research topic these days. So we will be uh, or we will be following this uh, uh, Judea Pearl's uh, casual inference framework. So by using that and understanding what really lies between the placement of the proximity of the uh, drivers and uh, the customer satisfaction and uh, company revenue uh, increment will be assessed in this uh, week's project. Thanks. So I am adding just this once because you have probably seen that, you know, some of the data sets that we are getting because companies are coming, they don't want it to be shared like to the public. So you can still write about it, but make sure that in your Git, you don't put the data. Just make sure that is, you know, that's the case. Um, and then also make sure when you are writing the blog, you know, don't put the table like of the data. Just you can add some kind of metadata, for example, this number of orders, this number of whatever, it's fine, but not really like the actual data um, sample. Okay. Uh, yeah, there is a question from Fasam. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I just remembered my question when you were mentioning about this uh, sensitivity of this data. I was actually curious, both for this project and in the international uh, job, industry what does it really mean by nda i mean what is the label i mean where is the line so the non-disclosure the non-disclosure agreement nda is just a non-disclosure agreement you're basically doing everything to keep the data private and only you will not share it for a third party and you know there are of course these specified things and usually ndas are signed it's a legal document in this case it's not a, a proper legal document it's much more of a consent that you actually acknowledged. And our, when we signed with Gokada and MOU, and you know, when we also signed with different companies, what we do is that we know this, we cannot ensure, like, we, you know, there's enforcement. They are, for example, if you were our, our employees, then we can enforce it because you and I then, or you and Ten Academy would have probably signed an NDA that are basically given any companies treated as its employees are part of the company. So if uh, an employee you know, is working on that data, it's okay, like because you are covered by our NDA and, uh, and then the company, uh, only the company needs to sign. In your case, you are not our employee. So that means we, we cannot insure. So that means if you just go and use it, we will be unable, you know, we are legally, we want to just be legally not obliged. So what we do is that we tell them like the best we can do is that we can inform you, we can write it, we can uh, also make you sign some kind of uh, agreement, just at least consent more than more than legally obliged, uh, you know, enforced way. And, and then that is, they agreed, okay, that's sufficient for them, right? So, but in, in many cases that you would need insurance as well. So some companies in the US, for example, they would need actually in the case of disclosure, that means the person is unable to do, they need the damage insurance. So there are, for example, Ten Academy has another branch. Uh, it, it's not an Ten Academy, but 
we have established another one to facilitate payment. It's called Tenacious. Tenacious sometimes facilitates that kind of things. So some people in Ethiopia or in Kenya, they, they are working for a US company and then they needed uh, you know, insurance. So basically data breach insurance. They are like that, you just pay for that as well. So it's much more of like companies need to really ensure they are legally protected at all cases. And that's what the, one of the reason why most companies don't want to hire from different countries. Like they want to hire, if they want to hire from one country, they want to hire from that country only. But it's, and or if they are hiring from other countries, they really don't want to give them data that is sensitive, right? Especially user, uh, it's called personal identifier. Um, so P, um, PIA or like the personal info identifier information. So those ones, you really, depending on the jurisdiction, for example, the European Union have um, this uh, like obligation that actually the user needs to consent and the user can ask to delete in all of that. Um, so, so these are related to that. Just hopefully that addresses the general, like, I mean, it's not a specific to your question, but it's the NDA, the non-disclosure agreement is really related to that companies or anyone is obliged to collect, to need to not expose that data um, unless it is anonymized. Even when it's anonymized, they have to ensure that it cannot be de-anonymized. You know, for example, by looking at the addresses, you'll be able to look, you know, who's ordering what, right? Maybe you don't know what they ordered because they haven't given you, but by really actually identifying the frequency of an order from similar locations, you'll be able to infer, you know, what could it be, right? And things like that, you know, uh, it can be used in criminal cases, it can be used in many cases. So does that answer your question? So that's why it's important to just start learning how to not, you know, data cannot be shared, shouldn't be shared even at all costs in principle uh, in GitHub, only code. And the data should be just yeah. like, um, you know, uh, you can use DVC or another framework to be able to just not share data. Great. Yeah, actually, uh, that is very specific to the first part of my question, which was understanding the industry standard of the NDA uh, arrangement. But the slightly and more smaller part of the question was, uh, I actually understood very well what you just said, but just to make sure, you guys are not really uh, legally binding to this contract. You established that really well, but actually, what is the line? I mean, we obviously can may share the may not share the file, but in, some accidents can happen, and that can be also uh, uh, circumvented in different several ways. But my question here is, I mean, what is the actual true upper uh, true line between, for example? Sharing the data is obviously not the right way, but in terms of EDA, uh, I mean, as feature engineering and putting- I mean, as, as, long as, as, as long as you are sharing aggregated or plots, it's fine. I mean, in actually a way, again- Actually, actually yeah? putting like five rows or 10 rows of a table is actually not, it's not good. going to, is, is not going to be good for your name, right? Yeah, so that's that you share the data. It doesn't matter if it's one or two, the structure of the data you share. Exactly. So exactly. the direct data, it is, post, it is just one has to avoid. The derived data, as long as this is not exposing the, in you know, just um, then it is, again, it depends. In this case, it, it is okay because they said it's okay. But again, even we would be changing actually, you know, we, we are considering whether to make it actually instead of a blog, you could do it a presentation. They actually want also a presentation. So, but the, the point to understand is that you can write about something, even, you know, most proprietary data, but without, in that sense, for example, you would just think, can someone, if it's aggregated, for example, they cannot change it back, right? If it's yeah. insight that you are sharing, it's fine. You know, but if you, if you are sharing just the data that is really done can be recovered, for example, the frequency of orders that are basically at different locations, 
you know, someone can just go and, um, you know, someone can actually just go and do it. So I think that's um, Margaret has asked a very good question. So the EDA in, in, on GitHub, right? That's like, you're doing a lot of stuff. And in this case, as long as there is no data, let's say, you know, you, you could be fine. Like, but because in principle, they cannot run it back or you could, you know, you could, um, again, you know, th this is really a difficult question. It's, it's, uh, there are multiple levels of the sensitivity of the data. In some cases, you, you are not even, it, it has to be private even. Like, I mean, in most companies, this has to be private. Your, your GitHub should be private. But in this case, I think we're not dealing to that level because we, we told them and, um, and we, there are things that we cannot avoid. For example, I think as, as Margaret said, um, the EDA, the notebook may contain some of the results. But as long as you are again, even in the notebook, if you are sharing, the, you know, don't print. That's why we keep even saying, and it's really, there's no point in really printing the whole data. So it's fine, the hate statement, that's that's sufficient, it's okay. But usually I use info or something like that. Again, from that, the structure is known, but it's fine. Like, right, it's just, uh, so I would say, don't share the data, like just let's, let's limit the, because if one goes into this, it's a rabbit hole, you know, it's just basically the label yeah, of, exactly. you know, the label, in most cases, this will not be the case. In a normal company, in an actual company, uh, that you will not be able to, you, you basically private things will be set up. Like you don't even work on your computer. You have to delete data in your computer. So these, you, you can't copy the data. So they give you in the cloud service, you work on the cloud, everything is there and you know, there's nothing out. In this case, it's a training. And we inform them, there are things we cannot avoid. And all we, we are doing at this point is just to not, to allow you to not share the data or to be sensitive whenever it's, you know, whenever it's shared. But the GitHub is the GitHub. It's, we can't avoid it. Yep. So hope, um, I mean, uh, there is a very, very, as Mohammed, your question, yes, there is a lot of reason for that. Um, most people don't want to get into, into that um, data sharing is one of the main issue why people don't want to hire from some some countries. Okay, um, let's proceed. So I think you know it's specified. Gokada is your client, and it is very much a growing company, and they want to expand. Right now they are in Lagos, but they are very much uh, looking forward, and they really deliver in millions uh, in a month. I think that's um, so. Yeah, like. They have delivered millions so, uh, in less than a year. And, but one of their issue is that they are experiencing a number of suboptimal placement of pilots or you know, drivers that are located in some places. And then when there is, you know, they are just delivery companies. So whoever just is ordering, they probably don't have, you know, drivers around and the orders will not be fulfilled, right? So, um, and Gogada, of course, is interested to do, to get more insight about, you know, what happens. Uh, they, they want to get more insight about the data, but also sometimes to answer some questions, at least, um, some of the interesting questions for them, right? So, and, and this is our, my proposed methodology that we would use first, because this thing is, we need some causal. So the really, the real difference between, you know, uh, causal versus correlation is that causal means you really are trying to avoid some of the things that are like sometimes X and Y are correlated, but that doesn't mean X causes, you know, uh, Y, you know, basically the number of eggs that are broken and the number of people who are died is shown to be highly correlated, right? For some unknown reason, but that doesn't mean you know, there are sometimes correlation up to 0 0.8 or 0 0.9. You know, you can just say, uh, uh, if you just do these. So, 
maybe just from that it, it's called uh, spurious correlations and you can see for example this is suicide by hanging triangulation and suffocation versus u.s spending on science space and technology right okay like you really can see over time they are since 1990 2019 it's highly correlated um and a lot more you know films nicolas cage appeared in versus number of people who drowned by falling into a pool you know per capita cheese consumption versus number of people who died by becoming tangled in their bed sheets you know it's you really can see so many correlations sometimes almost 99 percent you know this is 98 percent correlation and some are like you know 87 this is 99 percent correlation divorce rate in maine versus per capita consumption of margarine you know it's like so this is just one case where like people use it just for so that means correlation is not position everyone knows but then you have to go beyond like beyond acknowledgement you have to try to find a way um, to be able to say okay if now i know that but i want to really determine what caused ultimately what really affects you is not the correlation it's the causation that means something causes something right so um too much food causes something right or uh, air pollution you know causes lung cancer or cigarette probably causes cancer now in these kind of cases like they are established that they are causations that's what science is doing so how can you do something similar in 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 data and that's what this uh, formalism it's trying in you know it's called the causal inference and the causal inference is it tries to answer some questions and it's a calculus it's its own calculus it is really much a powerful calculus that has been used and is able to answer um, a number of uh, questions and one of the element in this calculus is that it also integrates your understanding we know that uh, automatically expert opinion and some algorithmic way can be integrated because it can test whether that survives the data but again it is dependent of course on the on on what is pre-known and um, or kind of pre-computed to be correlated right so and the first part of it, this causal inference is to build just simply without anything some form of graph it's called the causal graph the causal graph you build such that one thing one feature is relate to another feature and then that relates to another feature so you basically whatever uh, an expert opinion or the kind of algorithmically derived one you build some kind of connection and then the next step in that is it will test whether those connections are actually real or that means there is the data in evidence there is evidence from the data that is the case now once you establish the causal graph after going through this you know building the the causal graph uh, either from an expert you know that you ask them what do you think is whatever or from some kind of correlation based then you go into basically uh, within that there is a calculus there is uh, multiple types of calculus one of the very very important calculus or the very easy one is called the do calculus the do calculus basically is what normally is called intervention so that means if now given that you have built this causal connection you can as you can cut some of this let's say intervention means like if i now say like okay uh, there is um, let's imagine a feature that's called pollution rate in in you know air pollution rate is correlated to cancer let's say that's one graph that just connects these two features so in one column you have the pollution in the other column let's say you have uh, cancer cancer rate per, per year now if you want to do some do calculus what what you do is that you just say okay now i have i i know i know the value of this um, air pollution so you can just set it to be 100 percent right and then you try to ask okay like because it's no more
then you're determining the the weight so imagine for each of these arrows there is a weight and then when you do some kind of two calculus what it means is that if i know now zc absolutely that uh, you know um, intervention i'm doing intervention on on x then anything that comes to x that means that like you, you i'm determining to be i know x that means i don't need to be it's not x shouldn't be caused by anything else that comes to it right because every time when when it's like in an actual uh, data x is caused by many things but now when you assume you know x that means it's not affected by anything else so that means you cut every connection to x and that's what is called do calculus just you know you will have tutorials so you know you don't, don't bother if you don't understand but that is one intervention and there are other types of calculus that you can do on this graph and then you can recompute things and that will give you an answer right and that is that can be a machine learning as well that can be really a, you know it's a deep learning as well you can do you can have causal graph based uh, deep learning causal plus uh, graph based machine learning so you will read you know there are references but what it allows you that kind of things that you are saying what will happen to the number of for example completed orders if drivers are one kilometer away from their location now if this is if you want to answer this thing that the data must have of course distance in its feature right so there is there must be a destination or the order uh, start or the or where you know, the location of the order and then the drivers at that time right now you have to transform this data and then let's say you computed a causal graph based on that now a, a feature called um, you know that that is like the distance x in that case let's imagine that is the feature uh, one of your column which is the distance with us from the uh, order now you are saying like i know that so whatever that the distance that affects distance the driver's distance or the driver's kind of like where it is now i'm going to intervene on that now if i intervene on the graph like that what would happen and then you compute you know you kind of then finally just you know you get you get the result so you can answer so many types of questions like that which normally you cannot answer otherwise so which clients for example area in lagos frequently order if the number of completed deliveries increased by 50 percent again for this one you need to basically model the data in such a way that you have a feature called you know uh, percentage of um, deliveries right so things like that so and with that we want to answer you know, your task is you definitely a lot of as i said there's a number of data transformations feature engineering and you know preparing the data for causal modeling to answer different questions so some of the you know uh, may, some of the questions maybe two of the questions maybe you need you need to do one causal graph for the other one you might need another causal graph so because the transformation of the data is important but if you want you can also build more more features that can the same causal graph can try to answer many of the questions at the same time so this is um, up to you and infer the causal graph so how you build you can try to attempt by hand that means as being an as an expert but also there are algorithms that you will see that you can actually run and build um, a graph itself and then after that you would basically um, do some kind of operations on the causal graph to answer some of the questions and the interesting questions we are looking at actually c is not that much um we um so you can try it but the three ones especially given all you know drivers are recommended to move one kilometer every 30 minutes and a selected direction what happens to the number of unfulfilled requests so you know it's the framing of this data is itself interesting so lots of discussion is needed you know, how, you, know you basically attempt that and we can we can try to you know to help in that as well but this is you have to know this is original these are questions that are original that means you know even solving them can be you know attempting even one of them trying to model the data for that and building a causal graph is already very 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 interesting and um, you will learn a lot and also it's just it's powerful you could even you know ultimately a good company of this 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 work can be actually published or can be used for a number of really 
um, important work. Like that means really actual, real life changing. Um, so that's it. And um, you can read this paper if you want to understand more on this. And then here is the data. You have two tables. One table is called the, the basically the order, the, the trip table. And the other one is the order table, right? So um, in this, the first table is basically you get a trip ID and a, a trip origin, trip destination, and trip start time and trip end time. So basically, whatever was done, what you know, you you would get. So you can check, for example, like the trip end time by taking the difference of that. You can see the um, the the time it takes, and by computing the difference of that. You, com you can compute the distance, right? So, and then you will be able to say whether you can read label this data, you can remodel it to say short distance, long distance, whatever that, right? So that's one transformation you can do on this data. And, and not only that, by looking at the time, so morning, afternoon, or evening type of uh, uh, thing. So you can transform because you have time and space, you can actually do a number of things. You can even compute the speed that given given the country's road you can get it from you know um, basically you can compute it from google maps or any anywhere like especially osmx uh, osmnx can give you from open street maps you'll be able to calculate it simply it, it is a package that allows you to compute the shortest distance as well as also the shortest uh, driving um, route to that so you can even then compute, you know, the time it takes by that and and with respect to the ideal one. So you can compute even the, the speed of the driver um, in, in, in other parameters. So for example, you know, what, what happens? Was there a delay? Was there a traffic? You know, for if there are multiple origin and destinations uh, combinations, then if people take multiple times to arrive there, they probably took multiple routes or they probably did some other stop in between or the traffic was high, right? So you can recompute these kind of things as well. So, you know, there is so much you can do just on this data to enrich the data uh, as well. So you can also bring the, for example, the temperature of the, the time, you know, by the time, uh, what was the temperature? Was the training you can get from public data? You can query, you know, using API, some of just, you know, the weather data, for example, and you'll be able to get some understanding. Was this raining during this trip? Um, and with that sunny, you know, what, what was the season? It was, a, was it rainy season or whatever? You know, things like that, you know, or is it the holiday or is it not holiday? You know, things like that you can enrich based on just this. this. And the other one is that for some of the orders, unfortunately, even if there are, you know, as you can see, this is 1.5 million and this one is 530 uh, something data. But even if you have that, so these ones are basically the number of, there are a number of drivers that were pinged, like when there is an order, and then those, some rejected and some accepted. Now, your question is, of course, this is a poll. That means it's the order ID here and the trip ID here are similar. But if you look at the, or, the number of unique order IDs, here actually is about 26,000. That means, a very fraction of that. So most of the trips are not covered. It's only a sample of the driver actions or the number of drivers for a certain event is given on this data. So almost basically, you know, 10%, uh, uh, maybe even less than that, just less than 10% of the trips are covered in this one. So you, you get what is completed, you know, what's basically, you know, where the destinations, whatever are from this table, but then for some of for some of the orders or for some of the completed ones, you can find the driver's location at, and then the driver's action. So so there is a driver and its action as well as also its um, uh, its location. And these ones are zero, so that means you don't need anything. So that basically, unfortunately, there is no. It's basically the created and updated data. You know, you don't you don't need it. You can drop it. Um, it's none everything. We ask them if they can provide that data, but you know, that's fine. The data, as I said, is really then 
it's simple, but it's very powerful, right? You have actions of drivers for 26,000 orders. You have actions uh, of an end driver. So it's not like the number is not constant, but for one, it could be 10 drivers. So if you really multiply it, it's 26 times, you know, to get it's 26,000. So if we really compute even um, calculator, so it's like I5. Um, so 26, about six. Uh, let me just. Six. So there are about actually, let's say about 500 drivers action per, per uh, order. So you have the reaction and the location of about 500 in average drivers sampled, you know, what their actions and where they were at that time. Okay. So this is really gives you the dynamics for a given, you know, for 26,000 orders, it gives you the dynamics. And then for another ones, it gives you where the locations are, where the locations of the, you know, the orders start and end, you know, um, stuff like that. So this is really a beautiful data actually in some way that you can really enrich. Okay. Then when it comes to instruction, of course, there are three. The very first and the most important one I would like you to focus is on data exploration. As usual, you know, you set up your GitHub, you know, you do whatever the usual. So that's why I'm just passing it, you know, definitely set up um, whenever DVC, you know, kind of all the GitHub actions, whatever. I think keep, keep that habit, you know, let it be just like when you start a new project, let it be just that you are quick. You set up a test environment, you know, kind of like you can test something, you have DVC, you have, uh, you know, CML in one, you know, all of that by now, it should, should be easy for you. Like, um, you should be able to, to do that. And then just continue, you know, go directly to the, um, to the actual computation, right? So, and then in the data exploration, you really have to understand, as I told you now, and then use the OSE or SMNX, um, package to basically even be plotting them to be able to visualize them. There's really visualization is nice. You can really collaborate. Even if I want everybody to submit their work, this is not a group work project. This is an individual, but you can share as much information to really be able to do it as much. Right. So visualizations, whatever you know, tips and tricks, you know, kind of snippets of course, whatever you can share, but make sure now we know when to people copy things and we really don't want that. Like, I think you're basically, um, you know, it is not good for you. Like, we have to build trust on you for a number of reasons. If, because ultimately we want to tell companies like, you know, this is an amazing person. They will just be able to do. So that honesty, that being able to really attend what you can, even when, you know, even if you don't complete the project, it's okay. But because we know, there isn't only one way to get a good job. A good job really comes by discipline, you know, kind of trying your best, not giving up. Those are all because we know that ultimately you will be the best, right? So that that's not the question. You you will be the best. You will you will be able to learn a lot of things that you don't know now. In a year from now, when you are in a good place working, you know, there are a number of things you'll do it faster. And also companies for this project wouldn't give you only one week. They would give you, you know probably a month or two months. So this is much more of, you know, do the, your best, but your honesty, your integrity, and your kind of like collaboration with helping and getting help is the key component. So use that, but don't abuse it by just copying uh, in such a way that you can, because I, it doesn't matter. You know, the, as you can see, ultimately grades don't help you as much if we don't trust on you. So make us trust you in that way that you do your best, you try, and, and so I really encourage that people kind of 
you know, share and work together to finish the project. Ultimately, if we all finish it nicely because we collaborated, that's that's the best. You are one team sometimes, you know, it's not even, you are all one team. So we try to finish the best work. We try to produce as all the best work possible while at the same time learning, you know, what constitutes, what am I lacking in, what is other person, how did they do it, you know, somehow when a task is completed, actually everybody learns as well. So if it's not completed, not anyone, learn, you know, basically no one learns. So try in that cooperative mood, this is one team doing to complete this thing. So share as much as you can, really. But but again, you know, uh, ultimately it should be, when you report, it should be the ones that you understood. It should be the ones, uh, almost always try your best to write what you have done, to articulate the, the kind of your understanding. And every piece of your effort has to be reflected in your report, in your GitHub and stuff. So we, you know, show us that one show to the world that I want, but that doesn't mean that you have to finish, okay? So I would really encourage that kind of mentality. And so basically in this one, so you really can reach the data to, to by going and further, you know, even strategically, some of the group can just go while some are working on visualization and some of the group can work on enriching the data and to try to get more data, you know, API connectors, whatever, such that you can get weather data, traffic data, and other stuff. And then, of course, also, as I said earlier, you have to compute um, some things. You, if the data needs to be normalized so that it's appropriate, if it needs to, if you need to drive new features, you know, you do that. But the most important part, at least the minimum, is also that you have to compute distances, right? You have to compute difference in time, you have to compute distances and you have to compute the speed. Um, um, you compute distances, uh, speed, um, Um, oh. So write that program that really easily um, you will be able to compute timestamps between the two and then drive other key variables like speed, you know, shortest distance, driving route distance, uh, and all such that you you create from that some you know you have done something similar when you were working on the data engineering for you know the drone part you know where you had to compute some of this you know whether it's a car or the distance whatever you didn't need to compute but it's something similar you need to compute that such that um, you will be able to drive many other key key parameters okay and then also the best other way to do is to aggregate things. So you can compute the number of riders as well as also orders, successful and you know, basically uh, look, based on location, for example, order or region, as well as order um, uh, destination. And in, in kind of, in uh, in radius of some, some distance, right? So in a circular, uh, usually it's easier. So it's like, let's say in 500 meter, um distance you can compute these ones again you know for we don't have unfulfilled orders unfortunately uh, therefore it, it's basically we have to drive maybe the the trips the ids that are you know the the, the trip id in the driver data that does that's not in the fulfilled ones you can call them unfulfilled Right. So basically that um, in the data that we're talking. So in this one, it's the driver section. If there are order IDs for which no driver has accepted. So that means all there are there are such such order IDs. No driver was in the in the vicinity. So that means there is order ID where no driver says accept. So this is the driver action accept is it's either accept or reject. So if all of them said reject, that means the this order is called uh, a missing order or unfulfilled order. And for all the other, it's a fulfilled order. But the unfulfilled order, as you can imagine, order, rises, order ID is 26,000. 
So the number of unfulfilled orders within that are small. It's about 500 or something. So it's very small, um, but still you can you can use it. Okay. Um, so you can compute that. And I think that those really constitutes really key component. And then again, I think it's just clusters. And then do some kind of visualization, and you know use some of uh, it's uh, Holovis, but which is also a data shader in Python. Really can tell you uh, when it, or can give you easy way. You should learn data shader. It's, it's really a powerful uh, visualizer in Python. Uh, to be able to visualize high density, uh, high number of points, um, um, uh, graphs or plots in, in, in Python. It's really a powerful one. But then you can also use uh, some other way, like in this one, visualize in Python, finding routes between points. So this data would give you an OSMNX package. So that one really will help you. That's the main package that you can really draw Roots and stuff in a map. You know, if you look, if you if you look at this this medium blog, it's very much powerful. You know, you can okay. So you know, it's the package is called OSMNX. You can you know build your uh, environment, and then you'd be able to build something like that. Okay, so you would be able to compute multiple things uh, with that. Um, distances, routes. So this this log already will give you a number of nice property. And um, so, yeah, like we, you will look that one. While this one is really nice, this one is much more powerful. It's much more, you know, it's an award-winning visualization. And as you can see, this is on NYC taxi data. This is an open source data um, that's used a lot in, in Kaggle as well. So, but this person, <laughs> Sorry. So this person is really had made, you know, visualization to the next level. And so this is basically one, a taxi you can choose. You can choose a taxi, another taxi, right? And then it visualizes them, how they move starting from, you know, the morning, you know, it just he chooses a random, you know, and then like at every time that they go, without without uh, an order they basically made it um to be kind of empty but then when they are with 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 a, with a client then that means they are actually going uh, you know that there, there are blue lines otherwise empty lines and then when there is a stop or a start a start is green a stop is red right so that's basically and then it builds it builds and you, know, you can see it's a very beautiful visualization it has won a, a, a number of ones so of course you can get inspiration that's what i mean from that okay but you know that one uh, just for you and then the second part is really of course on causal learning split the data training and you know kind of do build your graph the very first thing is building your first uh, graph based on these three points will tell you that and you can read and then after reaching a stable graph, as well as also you can yourself be a, an expert and you know try to design your own connection, you know, between different features um, based on your thinking. You can compare the results ultimately, and then you try to answer by based on interventions. You can try to answer these four questions, right? But then also once you identified your features, you know the causal features, you can actually use those models to build. And machine learning to train that uh, whether it's able to predict right so that you can do some machine learning at least you can use uh, XGBoost and random forest and then you can of course because you have split the data you would be able to just then um, measure each you know the the performance of your models both causal and others uh, on this one okay and then the third component of course i know this is a lot like that's why i'm saying earlier Think of all of you as a team, otherwise and it's just too much, is the logistic optimization. This is much more of for future, but I want you to get introduced to how, what kind of way of thinking do you have when you are actually optimizing routes, deliveries, you know, the number of customers that should come in, or for example, for a restaurant, you know, what you should buy, the number of items you need to buy, you know, things like that. 
everything that requires that real life basically is a logic you know kind of there is a lot of logistic that needs to be optimized so how many resources do you need how many people do you need for that you know for example for a construction you know like as it progresses in the construction you know what kind of how many cars how many days like whenever you have that kind of it's called logistic optimization here is also it's really logistic optimization because you have a number of drivers and you want to place them in a certain way such that you uh, drive a certain kpi right so in that case there are i mean this is much more of reading and thinking uh, this part and writing what could be done and how you can restructure the data so I want you to get introduced to integer and linear programming in uh, in Python. So that's basically, you know, integer optimization or integer programming. It's a type of um, uh, a type of optimization. Okay. So and so there are a number of optimal routing with mixed integer programming. And again, that's the the part. And then a number of on on the bicycle optimization data on Kaggle. You can you can see. Go and check them because they will help you also for your own for this the visualization and others like even in in for task one uh, and task two some of these kaggle uh, notebooks will help you because they can comprehensive idea with xgboost you know bike sharing demand analysis and demand prediction bike sharing um, as well feature engineering and then also bike sharing um, modeling as well just there isn't i haven't found causal modeling there but you know you can find the ml version of that and the eda version of that and then there are different multi so multi objective means like when you don't have only one objective but what you have for example if you are only not optimizing only delivery or number of acceptance but you are also optimizing let's say the price or the distance it takes or whatever whatever that's called when you have more than one kpi that's called multi um multi-objective optimization and you can you can this one is a, a good also you know multi-objective optimization of bike routes for last mile package delivery with drop-offs that's you know it's a paper but just much much more on this element is for your understanding and then on task four of course is your reporting and you can choose whether it's a blog i i think for your own you know i always want that your blog because you can share it everybody can read it you know you you build but if you choose also you can prepare a very beautiful slide for a client so you can choose one way either to be like you know a pitch for a company like the kind of a pitch like uh, analysis and reporting as a as a let's say as a consultant to to work hard up or write for a public um, but you can choose we can I, I will update that one and and then the tutorials you know to there will be today, just after, I think soon, there will be one where actually in in in, certain, in five minutes maybe, so I, let me finish. The Gokada, uh, one of the director would talk to you about their, you know, the, their desire, whatever, so you can ask them questions. And uh, I mean, I don't know what time, so I will, I will check. But, and then there will be on, Understanding causal inference tool, advanced visualizations, and causal inference tools, as well as working with causal in, um, inference and logistic optimization. We will have some tutorials. We will assign people, but um, that's it. And there are a number of references on that, so you can you can check that one. So let me stop there. And I I, I see probably there is a question. Was there a question? Uh, intervention, Mohammed, is basically is a type is a type of like do calculus earlier i was trying to explain what do calculus is you basically a type of question that you say if i if i do this what happens that's intervention because you are intervening on on one of the variable so the intervention is then framed in terms of the variable you have so for example in this case if if i ask every driver to come to this point then that means like you're, you're changing a variable called location, starting location to be, you know, you know, to be one, like to be known. That means that you, there is no, every variable that affects starting position is now gone. Like, so that's the inter, it's a, it's a type of the, 
in the intervention is a type of in this causal inference it's a type of operation okay and it's called one way it's called this do calculus or do operation or it's called intervention does that make sense Hopefully that does. Okay, any question? Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, in your, in your, so the EDA, the five lines, don't put it in the, don't put it in the, maybe in the, in the blog. Just don't put any raw data in the blog whatever just as a in your github okay you know but out of just principle don't put any row row lines but if it's in github it's okay you know, let's not bother about it so think less about that just keep only i mean if two things that you you should think you know it shouldn't bo it shouldn't bother you too much the two things is that don't share the data on the on github or anywhere right don't share it with anyone that's the very, very important part. Let it not be found by anyone else from anywhere. You only just work on it. And, and then as much as possible, whenever you realize, don't in the open spaces, especially on um, articles, like on Medium, just don't put the raw data, just some transformer data. Info is fine. The info of the data is fine more than the, let's say the hate of, so, you can share maybe the info, but not the, the head. So just so that you don't share exactly this particular locations, you know, like the locations are very sensitive, right? So if the, because they are high digits, when they are transformed, usually no one can see, or if they're in the info, no one can see. So as long, you know, don't show that raw data, but the, the rest don't bother. Okay, what else? Any question? If not, then I assume that everybody has understood. Yeah, that's fine. Like, that's what I'm saying. Just let's not, it is true. It was um, inform the structure, but let's, let's not bother for now because it feels the rabbit hole might catch us. So it's kind of, uh, as long as no private information is shared, let's, let's say that that's a, the you know, private by mean the driver's location, nor the client's location, even if we don't know the client, but the client's location can point to the client, right? So one can go to that address and can see who that person is or what what business is that, right? So just to avoid that, let's not share just those, those elements. Okay. I assume it's all clear and people are excited. I really like the spirit of today because everybody's very willing to talk and energetic. So yeah, keep up the good work. Don't forget you are all one team trying to achieve the best one can, you know, the best you can achieve. While at the same time, when you write and when you submit, your work is reflected, not anyone's work, okay? But really you can even in Slack divide and conquer. I would encourage that as well. Just like, okay, now I will be taking this, but please people, if you are working on the visualization, I would really want to learn more. So I can share that, you know, you kind of can be willing to go and explore one thing and come back and to share, expecting other people to do the same on another area. But, you know, you can treat all of you as one group so that uh, overall we do the best, okay? Hopefully that's clear and, and no questions. So thanks, guys. Cheers.